Here we are in Philadelphia. We just protested yesterday, May 5th, 2012, Occupy APA at the American Psychiatric Association. I'm here with one of the protesters. He flew in from Berkeley, California, longtime activist Ted Chabazinski, who has been in this movement for 41 years. So, Ted, I understand that you're already calling for an action when the American Psychiatric Association goes to San Francisco in May 2013. Why so early? Well, it's never too early to organize something like this. I think it's really vital that people realize this is a long struggle. As David said, I've been in the movement for a long time. It's something that we have to do. You're going to have, by that time, a new DSM-5 is going to go into effect, which virtually anybody can be diagnosed now with a new DSM. You're going to have these um, child psychiatrists like Dr. Biederman who have been taking millions of dollars, and that's very well documented, they've taken millions of dollars from the drug companies to push psychiatric drugs on children as young as 18 months. And we just have to do something about it. While I was here, I met a number of people who were struggling to overcome, you know, the, the, the physical effects and of the drugs, and, and not only that, the effects of being locked up and told that you're somebody less than human, that you'll never be anything but somebody who takes psychiatric drugs for the rest of your life, that you'll never work, that you'll never go to school, you'll never be anything but a mental case. And we have to fight against that, and I think one thing we can do is, as I say, keep telling the general public that they're in danger now, and also I think that you know, people often think, well, you know, these, these psychiatrists, why should we worry about what they do? It's only a, these, these little bunch of worried people on the street. And people respond much better when you say, these are little children. I mean, 18 months old, don't go around bombing bridges or hitting people. So, Ted, uh, what can the average uh, activist do? I mean, here we are a year ahead of time. There are our activists in the movement with uh, group in groups and coalitions, whether they're in the Bay Area or not, what can what can these activists do at this early date to help support uh, May 2013 in San Francisco and make it the biggest uh, uh, biggest protest ever in our movement? Well, those who can you know do it, I think you should start saving your money for your plane ticket, and we we plan on making sure that it's easy for you once you get to San Francisco. We're going to have housing arrangements, we're going to have um, uh, some way of making sure you know where you're at when you arrive in the city. We're going to spend a lot of time with that because I think a lot of people will come from out of town. I also think we can start focusing on certain things in our local um, uh, areas. One thing, for instance, is, um, is a Facebook, book, book, Facebook page, group rather, which I urge you all to join. Uh, stop drugging of children, um, and we're turning that into an, an action group now. We're starting to discuss what can be done. And let me tell you, ten of you protesting at some hospital that does, that, you know, that abuses children, you'll get some media coverage. People pay attention to that. I think, you know, wherever you are, you can do some small protests, and I do think both DSM-5, which is going to affect everyone, plus the fact that everybody is shocked when they really consider what happens to children. Even though you only have a small group, I think you can get some local media coverage. And once you decide to come, try to get as many people as possible to come. Or if you can't manage that, have your own little protest around the same time as the APA uh, meets in San Francisco. You can have, it's been done, I think, in about six cities this time. Let's make it 10, 15, 25 cities where you have little protests against the APA and psychiatric abuse at about the same time as we're having our larger demonstration in San Francisco. Hey, Ted, uh, one thing I noticed about the protest yesterday, which was great, I mean, hundreds of us marching and protesting and speaking out, but we thought there'd be more allies, and really it ended up being psychiatric survivors, people like you who were, like you were forcibly electroshocked and locked up, and it tended to be that's who showed up. How can, how, what, what's your message to the general public? Somebody who's not a psychiatric survivor, maybe as a, as a friend or an ally, or, why should they be at the protest in San Francisco? Why is this beyond uh, just us? Why, why should they show up? Well, 
First of all, the DSM-5 really threatens everyone. I'm going to do a tally that I remember seeing earlier on, and it may not be on the web anymore, they were, they were the APA was um, uh, estimating the prevalence of all these diagnoses, and I added it up, and yeah, let's say 17% of people have this, and 6% of people have that. And when I added it up, it came to 350% of the population, <laughs> which is nonsense, but a lot of things the psychiatrists say is nonsense. But, I'm, but basically, um, I think something like 95% of the people, and some of these things are so nonsensical. So people are personally threatened, and beyond that, I think progressive people in general need to see us as an oppressed group, just like any others. If this was being done just to black people, or it's being done to plenty of black people, if it was done just to gay people, who remember just 30, 35 years ago, they were labeled with a mental illness too. And they fought back, and we have to fight back. But I think even people that are not even at risk for this, I think they should start seeing us as any other oppressed group. The difference, though, I think, is you have an entire industry that's profiting off our oppression. It's not just, you know, people's bad attitudes about women or gays. It's people who make money off us being hurt. And I think those, for instance, in the Occupy movement who recognize that this corporate domination of, of, of the American economy and even the American psyche, you might say, American culture, they recognize that big corporations just have too much power. Well, the American Psychiatric Association is nothing but a subsidiary of the big drug companies, and they have way too much power, and that power should be fought too. Now, I've got a question that is really personally on my mind, which is I've been so excited about Occupy. Uh, I, I, Occupy Eugene is right across from the Mind Freedom International office. In Toronto, Occupy Toronto actually is co-sponsoring today's Solidarity event along with the Coalition Against Psychiatric Assault. Officially, it's like an official Occupy Toronto event. And yet, in Philadelphia, I asked, and maybe there was only like one representative from Occupy Philadelphia, and a bunch of us did a lot of outreach and uh, what they tell us is, well, you've got to actually show up at the General Assemblies. You've got to actually shepherd it through their process. I mean, do you think that's the answer to, to, to kind of break through to, to some of these radical activist groups that have been sort of ignoring us? Or? Well, I don't have an answer because I haven't tried to reach out to Occupy, but I think they're a very important force in, in the American left right now. And I think since they're very aware of, you know, corporate, that's their whole thing, that just the 1% have all the power and 99% of us have almost nothing. Well, we psychiatric survivors are certainly part of that 99% and the drug companies and their agents, the American Psychiatric Association, is certainly part of the 1%. And however we do it, I think that's what we have to try to get the occupied people to see um, but I think we ourselves have to believe it. There's a certain tendency in our movement, I think, people don't look at the larger politics of things, and I think that's very important. I think in order for us to break through to the rest of the left, because I certainly consider myself uh, a progressive, you know, leftist person, in order to break through that, we have to understand ourselves what our problem is. And I think our problem is corporate, corporate dominance. The, corporate, the drug corporations run the psych psychiatric profession. They spend a lot of money propagandizing how we're these subhuman people who are running around with knives in our hands. They have a lot of money to gain, and they're gaining it. And so, but we have to see that. It's very important for people in our movement to start paying attention to the larger political situation. And I don't think we can convince the occupied people of anything if we don't see that problem ourselves. So I think perhaps our movement needs a little internal education about the role of the corporations in, in psychiatric oppression. And I've got one more question, Ted, because I know near and dear to your heart and my heart is youth uh, leadership. We had a number of young adults leading yesterday. Uh, you, you and I were both abused as young people in the mental health system. Uh, and now, after decades in the movement, um, you know, what's your message to a young person who's uh, wondering about getting involved in this movement for the first time, uh, taking leadership, uh, teens, college age, 
young adults. Uh, what, what's your message to these potential new leaders? Well, you know, I'm going to go back a little bit. Just recently I've been doing patients' rights advocacy on certain awards in um, the San Francisco Bay Area that have adolescents and children. And I've been so moved by their stories because I always tell them about my story and they open up to me. And I, I think that what, and then at this, at this manifestation that we've had here in Philadelphia, I've met people, there was one particular woman from North Carolina who reminded me so much of these 12, 14 year old girls that I met on these wards. And so I think there's a tendency, and I think she probably did it too, and I certainly, well, I didn't do it so much, but I think a lot of people who've been through this experience, they want to put it behind them. They don't want to think about it, and I think, you know, you can't put it behind you. You spend a lot of your childhood being told what a worthless, non-human you are, and it's hard to face up to it, but you're going to feel a whole lot better when you do. And that, there's one particular person here who really inspired me because she's just gotten off drugs a short time ago. She's starting to cultivate, you know, the kind of person she could have been 20 years ago before the psychiatrist got a hold of her and drugged her and crushed her initiative and her, and her self-esteem. I think if you get involved in this movement, you're going to feel good about yourself. You're going to be fighting back against the people that oppress you. And you're going to start feeling, you're going to reject the, there was a label rip that maybe David will talk about where people ripped up their labels. But it's even more important to rip up the labels in your mind. You know, you're not this subhuman you know, creature who, you're 12 years old, but now you have a lifetime of drugs ahead of you. You're not that person. And if you stand up and say that in public and, and protest against the people who made you feel this way, it's going to help you get rid of those bad feelings about yourself. I know I was locked up when I was six, and coming into the movement in 1971 was a great step forward to me. I mean, I never forgot what had happened to me, but I was always carrying around. It's awfully hard to to get rid of that feeling you've been indoctrinated with all your childhood. But as soon as I got into the movement, I just felt totally different about myself. And you're going to find it a very liberating experience to get involved in our movement and to fight against the people who have tried to crush you when you were a child. Stand up for yourself and you'll feel a whole lot better. That's my message. Yes, thank you, Ted. Uh, we were both told that we were hopeless mental patients, that we would never, quote, get better. We not only, quote, got better, but we're actually speaking out and supporting other young people and young adults that want to speak out. So if you want to be in, in touch with Ted, you want to be in touch with the protest in May, uh, or you want to be in touch with uh, getting involved in the MAD movement, contact Mind Freedom International. That's Mind Freedom. Just Google it uh, or Google Occupy APA. Thanks a lot, Ted, and thanks for your 41 years of activism and for being here in Philadelphia for the protest yesterday, May 5th, 2012, Occupy APA. Thank you, Ted. Thank you.